Good afternoon everybody here from the East Midlands in the UK. How are you doing? Welcome back to 30 for 30, your Excel VBA absolute beginner course. Let me know in the chat. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Let's rock and roll with another session. So what do you think about the program? And are you motivated today to get the traffic lights working? That's what we're doing. Yes, we're moving into more applications. That means getting jobs done using Excel VBA rather than just learning the techniques of Excel VBA, though that is fun as well. I've been loving the engagement. I've had some people send me files. So great job to Peter Jones and Alistair Moffat who have both sent me files where they've demonstrated to me what they've been learning and they've been having fun with it. That's the crucial point. Go and have some fun with it. Once you can get into that play mindset, you are good to go. Excellent. Thank you to people in the chat saying coming through loud and clear. So today, are you motivated to get this traffic lights job done? Now we do have a download file today. We do have a download file. So go ahead, download the download file the download file, and then we'll be ready to rock and roll. Now, just be, just before I say hello to people in the chat, let me go back to another of my applications of Excel VBA. I'm going to show you four or five of these between now and the end of course of the course to get you thinking about what you might do using Excel VBA. And once again, I'm going to show you my Members Monday contact navigator file, not because I want to advertise Members Monday to you, although Members Monday is a thing. It's kind of, kind of kind of a soft advertisement, but this is genuinely what I've been working on in Excel VBA for the past week or so. It's a problem for my business. How to organize all of this video content so that people can find things that they want. So I've generated a couple of mechanisms in here. One mechanism is creating a summary for each session. And we do that at the click of a button. A second feature I've been building in is your Members Monday training plan generator. How about this? Excel VBA based functionality right here, creating massive value for my business. Hopefully going to create some massive value for the members. So what's the idea? Well, if we go to our input, this is our data set. Uh, we can see we've got topics on the left here. So for example, uh, here, so 11 minutes into Members Monday 2, 11 minutes in, I'm talking about the concepts. Go down a bit. I'm talking about the concept of workbook uh, event change macros there. That's how it's working. So what I wanted to be able to do is for people to say, OK, I'd like to brush up. I'd like to improve my understanding of formulae. Then we'd go through this list and line up, create a list of all the times I've mentioned formulae on Members Monday, list them out to create what is like a training plan. The idea being you could just go through, uh, click on these and build your skills in a particular area. For example, formulae, for example, conditional statements, for example, loops. So this is the idea, the rationale behind the training plan generator. And this is what this is what it looks like. Let's go to the desktop view here. So all you would have to do is go to the top here. Uh, we've got uh, a drop down menu and then for example, OK, let's go for formally going to click on formally here and then you hit generate. It's going to give me a confirmation message. Are you sure you want to do this? We're going to cover this very soon in 30 for 30. How to generate these uh, yes, no message boxes. You go ahead and it gives you a nice list here. And what do we got on this list? Let's uh, zoom in quickly. So formally, then we've got Members Monday 1 and the date the stream was delivered, the stream title, and then on the detail uh, column here, we've got a little bit of detail about what I was talking about there, what we were doing on Members Monday, the right formula, the match formula, count a formula. And then in column F, most important, we've got a link. So if you click on this link, I won't do it now because when my computer's streaming and running Excel, it seems to create a lot of load on it, which affects the stream. But you can just click on this. It's going to open up your browser, take you to the video, but not only that, take you to the specific point where we mention whatever we're talking about here. So that's your Members Monday training plan generator and generated using Excel VBA. Let's have a quick look at the code. So once again, you're not going to understand all the code, but can you look through code and pick out the parts you understand? So for example, okay, we've got an if statement here. 
So that's a conditional statement. What else have we got here? We've got a for each loop. Uh, so all of this code is, is within the for each loop there. We've got another conditional statement here. We've got use of offset, so position control. Uh, we've got a use of a variable here. So even if you're just starting, it's a really good idea to go through some more advanced code. Just pick out the parts that you understand. You'll be surprised how much you understand. So you can do that with any of the files from my series. For example, the chess challenge. We've got a series where we try to create a chess computer using Excel VBA. You can go through and have a look at that. That's all good stuff. So let's go back to the whole camera view here and let's get into the chat, see who's with us today. And let's make sure we've got today's file open. So welcome everybody. Good to have you with us. 32 concurrent uh, viewers. The press ups promise is still in place. 60 concurrent viewers. I get down and break out the press ups. So welcome Ian from Scotland. Welcome Michael. Good to see you again. Frank from Holland. Uh, Adrian from Wales. Uh, a new Members Monday member. So welcome Adrian. Tomorrow we're doing Members Monday, of course. Gusa, welcome. Pete B, welcome. Uh, Daniel, welcome. The General's with us. Jorgen is back. Welcome, Jorgen. Simon, good to see you with us, Simon. Paul Taylor is with us. Welcome, Paul. Lee Williams is with us. Welcome, Lee, another member. Welcome, Mike C. Good to see you. Rainy over there. Henrik, welcome. Stanislav, Steve B, welcome. I don't think I've seen you yet, Steve B. So welcome to the stream. And is that everybody? Welcome, Andrew Scoins. Welcome, Chris. And I think that's everybody so far. Welcome, Joanna Sevs and Maria Great to have you with us. So let me know in the chat, have you managed to download the download file? Do you want me to shut up and get going with some proper code? Understood. I will get going with some proper code here. So this is as far as we got yesterday. Did you manage to do it yourself? Did you manage to go ahead and actually complete this code? Let's go to the VBA editor here. VB editor not open. Uh, Alt F11 shortcut. Alt F11 on the Windows PC. And there's our VBA editor. So the real key point yesterday was structuring a task. So when we've got a new job in VBA, a new application, we don't just jump in. Very tempting to just open the VBA editor. We don't do that. We try to go through it step by step, create this pseudo code. So use an inverted comma in Excel VBA and type things out and get it crystal clear in our own heads what we're trying to do. Only after we take that step, have we built that conceptual foundation, do we actually go into the code? So that's what we did yesterday. Went through the concepts and we built this supporting mechanism that's going to get it clear in our heads. Uh, we've got the button and crucially, we've got this current state cell. This concept of state is going to control uh, the positioning or the coloring of those lights. It's a crucial intermediary concept for us to understand what's going on there. So what can we do that now? Well, yesterday we tested out the conditional statement. So I, I love select case. It's so flexible, allows you to deal with any number of conditions as far as I know, and uh, has great uh, a great catch all function function as well. Case else uh, if none of the case, the previous cases are fulfilled super flexible. We saw it in action yesterday. So case one, what do we want to do? Because we don't want to just do nothing. What do we want to do? Well, case one means, and here we're seeing our table helping us, our preparation, conceptual understanding helping us. If it's state one, then we want light one, which is right here to be colored red. Light two is going to be no fill, although we might fill it white and light three is also going to be no fill there. So let's go ahead and do that. So how do we do this code? Well, whoa, whoa, I don't know the code. I don't know the code for coloring a shape. So sorry, guys, that's that's going to have to be the end of the stream. Bye, bye. I'm only joking, guys, you know this. But is that going to be your reaction when you don't know code? What's your reaction be going to be when you don't know the code? Well, we've got our sources of code. And what are our three sources of code? We've got organic code that we write ourselves. We can't use organic code today because I don't know the code. 
We've got recorded code, so we could go ahead and record the code. How do we do that? Go to the macro recorder, developer tab, hit record. I'm not gonna do that. And then do what you want to do. So click on the shape, color the shape, and then review the code in the VBA editor. So that would be possible. The third source of code, recycle code. So you can take some code from another file or go online, go online, and borrow some code and say thank you and make the acknowledgements if required. So in this case, um, I'm acting up a bit because I did actually know this code, but make sure you're responding in the right way there. Yeah, how there's different ways for you to get this code. I'm not a coding encyclopedia. I know some basic pieces of syntax. I'm always going online to recycle code, always recording code. So make sure you're responding in the right way. And we're getting some great, um, getting some great contributions here. People saying macro recorder, people saying Google. That's what I want to see. That's an Excel meta skill. That's what actually matters. Do you know what to do when you don't know what to do? Welcome to Ian Box joining us. Welcome to Radonna. Haven't seen Radonna with us so far from the Lone Star State in Texas. Fantastic to see you. Farador also checking in. Good to see you guys. And Jasmine, one of our members at the bottom there saying, Raw, the tiger, raw. Jasmine, just explain what you mean by the tiger, raw. We should, we should trademark that concept as soon as we can. So do what you got to do to find the code. I've got a little note here just to remind me. So activesheet.shapes, shapes is the collection. Then we've got to think, what's the name of the shape? How do we find out the name? Click on the shape and you'll get the, the name in the top left corner. Alternatively, and I do recommend, and I'll keep recommending it because people never listen first time. I never listen first time. The selection pane, page layout, selection pane, super useful when you're working with multiple shapes and charts and stuff. So there's different ways for us to work out the name of a shape. Let's go back to the zoomed in view here. So light one, where's the VBA editor? There it is, sheet.shapes, and then the name of the shape. Now your syntax has to be 100%, 100% accurate. If I don't put the space in there, you can see there's a space, then I'm gonna get some kind of error. So let's be precise with that syntax and let's go ahead and now we're going into the properties of this object. So dot fill, uh, four color. Obviously I wanna put the U there being, being British, but you know, we have to go the American way sometimes. Four color dot RGB. Okay, RGB that is. And then equals. And then VB red is going to give us red. So there's some code I've written that organically. You could uh, uh, record it in the macro recorder. If you do record it in the macro recorder, it might be untidy. You'll probably get seven or eight lines of code, but hey, hey, it does the job. As you go through your career, you're gonna learn the more streamlined versions. Thank, thank you, Jasmine. And thank you, Lee, for explaining the raw concept. 43 viewers, eight likes. Whew, okay, uh, 18 more viewers, and I'm gonna be breaking out the press ups today. So let's go ahead. We've done a little bit of code. Let's go and do our testing. Hit, hit, hit hitting the next step, step button. So until we get back to one, nothing's gonna happen because we didn't put any code in. For the other cases, back to one, and we can see we've gone red there. But it's not just light one, is it? Uh, it's also light two and light three. And for completeness, to be sure, Let's go ahead and color all the lights each time. So you could see I just did selected the code, control C on the Windows PC, reposition the pointer, control V. So a nice easy uh, copy paste there. Now we need light two. You need to be careful with the syntax, light three. And the other lights, I'm just gonna use white. So maybe we could uh, use no fill, but I don't know that off the top of my head, uh, what the, the syntax is for no fill. No fill. It's like someone called Philip is uh, objecting to this. No fill. Okay. Right. VB white. Let's put that in. So now we should have white coloring in the other shapes. So go ahead, do the copy paste, change the syntax. And then we've got VB white in there. Do my sense check. Sense checking now. Syntax. Checking the syntax. Does it look reasonable? 
looks reasonable enough. Next step, three, four, and now one. And we can see we've done our recoloring there. So you can see how we work through this. You know, we don't just do lots and lots of code and then test it at the end. Do a little bit of code, test it. Do a little bit of code, test it. That keeps the stress levels down. That's going to keep your uh, coding sessions long and productive and going to mean you're not going to want to throw the computer out of the window. So we're going to continue with this. Uh, Andrew says, just a short question. Is it possible to perform moving calculations in a user form <laughs> when, when using multiple pages of a multi-page object? Can't answer that question right now, Andrew. I'm sorry. There's too many technical terms for me. I've got to concentrate on the traffic lights. Uh, if you leave a comment, Andrew, I'll have a look at your question later on. Uh, Jasmine saying it's comedy hour. Indeed, always is. Uh, instead of having white fill, you could use color with transparency, Paul says. Yeah, that would be another idea. So you could um, change the transparent uh, property of the shape. And that would be another way to achieve uh, this uh, light with no fill. So we're happy with state one there. And then copy paste to case two. So what's case two? Well, again, we can go to our table for support here. So red, yellow, and then no fill. Yes, fill, no fill. And red is going to be okay. And then does VB yellow exist? And then white for the third shape looks reasonable to me. Doing my sense check. Let's go ahead and test. Next step. That's looking good. So state one looks good. State two also looking good. Back to the VBA editor. So again, copy paste here. Let's go to the other side of the screen. And then case three. And what is the state here? What's the coloring? So it's going to be white, white, and then green. So I could go ahead here. Uh, VB white, VB white, and then VB green down here. So we should have three of our four states should be done now. So let's go next step. Good. So state one, state two, state three, looking good. And then state four, once again, let's copy paste the code. Copy it in here, back to our table, consult with our table. We've done our preliminary work in the table. Let's use it. No fill. And then yellow and no fill. Okay, so white's okay. Then we've got yellow here. And then white again. Okay. So you can see this, this is how you accomplish things in Excel VBA. You know, chipping away at it. Uh, doing a little bit of code, checking it, and then you could see, you know, kind of, it's kind of pattern recognition, this, because you don't have to rewrite this code, do you? It's going to be a repeated structure, so you can copy paste it. And maybe we'll look in future how we could rep uh, avoid this repeated structure, because a lot of repeated instru structures in code tend, tends to be a weakness, although it's more of a higher level consideration. But we want to avoid having to repeat a particular piece of syntax. So maybe in a future stream, we'll look at how we can economize on this code and um, and improve it. Right. So I can go ahead now. Have we got the full functionality here? OK, we've got a red light, yellow light, green light, amber, and then back to red. Cool. So let me know in the chat, you know, how is the pacing? of that demonstration because I've got some feedback saying it's too fast and hopefully you were able to keep up with that. Ian Box says I wrote a separate sub with three parameters, color one, color two, color three. Okay, so Ian's talk, talking about interaction between different routines there. So from one macro, we can call another macro. So that sounds like a good idea, Ian. Uh, Simon says, no, that's cool. Thank you, Simon. Uh, Andrew says, is the live chat actually recorded when you put the videos online in YouTube? Yes, I believe you can see the live chat. I believe you can see the live chat alongside the YouTube videos. Um, Ian says, same, Chris, but less coding. 
good Ian, yep, I think I've mentioned there's quite a lot of repeated structures here, so we could economize on that, and Ian's found a way to do it. Well done. And uh, Daniel says the basing is fine. Thank you. And Jasmine, yeah, there might be some alternative code here. Yeah, you, know, you might be able to use some kind of RGB code or something, uh, coloring in VBA. There's various different ways to do it. Uh, we can also use uh, the color index in VBA. Here we're using this RGB coding. There's three or four different ways to do it. Do you need to know all the different ways? No, but find a way that works for you, allows you to get the things done uh, that you need to do. Uh, Adrian says, I've missed how you've set up current state. Good. And Peter and Henrik says, we can always repeat afterwards. Don't forget that, guys. You can always repeat stuff afterwards. Yeah, Adrian, the, the current state, so in the download file, it's it's this code here. So a simple piece of code here, which is going to increase the value in D13, unless the value is more than four. Well, it will increase the value. Then if the value is more than four, because we don't have a fifth state, we're going to reset the value to one. Uh, so when we play this, uh, you can see that value going up and then back to one. That's that's the key part of this mechanism. It all pivots around what's going on in that cell here. So already getting some good feedback. Looks like plenty of people have got it working. We've got 44 concurrent viewers. Do I need to get warmed up here? Before we take this further, let me tell you about what's going on tomorrow. So tomorrow, of course, is Monday. Uh, so we've got a double header. So we'll be doing 30 for 30, 1600 UK time. And if you're loving this and you want to take your Excel VBA to the next level, if like me, you think Excel VBA can have a career changing effect, it had a massive career changing effect for me. You might be interested in Members Monday. Uh, if you sign up, you're going to be able to get involved with the stream tomorrow. So it's uh, an hour after the start of the 3030 stream. So we can have a double header 3030 to Members Monday. We're working through real world problems. I absolutely love Members Monday. We've got such a good community. Lee's in our community. Jasmine, Adrian, you can see in the chat, these people are great contributors. You're going to love Members Monday. Just hit join below this video if you would like to get involved. $12.99 a month. And there you can see, you can hit join below this video if you're interested in getting involved with Members Monday. Let's get into the chat. Any further questions on here? Uh, BC, BC, welcome. If a shape color stays the same in the next step, can you leave the code out then in the next step? That's absolutely true, BC. So if, uh, for example, yep. Yeah. So here, case one to case two, light three, Let's go back to the code here. Case one to case two, light three is not changing uh, color. Yeah, so we could say for case two, yeah, we probably don't need that code. So I've included it here for completeness. So rather than thinking, which do I need to include and which don't I include? I just think it's easier to include the ball and probably clearer. But you're right. You could economize on the code by, for example, omitting that line of code I've highlighted there. So a good point there from B6. Uh, and Stanislav said, could you recommend creating this code with pause? Now, a few people in the chat I know have done this. Um, so Alistair, who sent me a file, I don't think Alistair's with us today. Um, but if you want to create a pause, look up XLVBA wait, put it into Google XLVBA wait. You should be able to loop through it with a pause on it. So Google that. I'm not going to demonstrate that because in real life, it's not that useful to be able to build weight functionality into spreadsheets, but you can find it uh, online. Uh, Gusa says, why is it not necessary to end the if statement? Yeah, good question, Gusa. So this is a question of syntax and we do have this line of code end select. So the key features of the syntax here, we've got the and select that closes the conditional statement and then the select case line of code at the beginning that opens the conditional statement and then here we're saying to excel this is what i want you to look at this is a range but it could be something else that's what the next question i'm going to ask you and then we've got the different possible values for 
whatever object we specify. So they're the main features of the select case code. In the description for this video, uh, there's a video which is called uh, Excel VBA Conditional Statements for Beginners. We've got a series where I go through the exact techniques I use to cover all conditional statements. It's very simple. Simple one line conditional statement, if, else, end, if, and select case. If you've got those three techniques, we cover them all on 30 for 30. You're going to be good to go with conditional statements in VBA. It's a good question there from Goose of 45 views, 13 likes. Thank you very much, guys. Right, here's my challenging question for you. So get ready in the chat. Let's even get some contributions here. Let's suppose our customer comes to us and says, I'm loving the traffic lights, but I don't like this current state thing. Yeah, I don't want the user to be able to see the current state. It could be for any number of reasons. You know, perhaps uh, they want a better level of security. They don't want the user to be able to see it because if you can see it, you might be able to play with it and adjust it and break it, for example. Yeah, so what's going to happen now? Now we can see we've got an error, a type mismatch error, because Excel is saying, well, you haven't given me what to do. You, you haven't told me what to do if that, yeah, some kind of error, okay? So let's suppose, yeah, our customers wants a better level of security and they're saying, I don't want you to use a cell to control this state thing. I don't want to use a cell. So my question for you in the chat is what options are available to us? Where else can we store information outside of the spreadsheet? Already got some good answers coming in here. So Paul says, hey, yes, <laughs> Paul, two great answers. Um, one classic answer. So Paul says we could hide the sheet. Interesting idea and certainly possible. So if you want to hide a sheet, you can right click at the bottom and then go to hide and that will allow you to hide the sheet. Hidden sheets still appear in the VBA editor. So you'll be able to see all of the sheets in the VBA editor, even the ones that are set to very hidden, but we won't go into that now. So yeah, we could hide a sheet. So that is a possible solution. I like it. Paul also said, well, we just use white font. Uh, this, this is a bit of a classic solution. Uh, that you'll see in spreadsheets sometimes. So we could just say, yeah, just, just put it in white font. Yep, that means it's not visible immediately. But well, if we select the cell, then we can see the values are there. So control Z. So some good ideas there from Paul. And then what else have we got? Lee says, how about hiding the cells and lock the worksheet? But I know that isn't the VBA answer. Yeah. So great thinking there, Lee. Yep. So locking the cells. How do you lock a cell in Excel? Well, if you right click on the cell, then go to format cells. So right click format cells. Then you can go to protection and make sure the cell is locked. You then have to go to view at the top. A uh, uh, review it is, isn't it? Review and then protect sheet. So a certain combination of clicks will allow you to lock the cell. Yeah. And again, just Google Excel protect sheet to get better instructions on how to do that. So we can see as always in Excel, different options and each option has pros and cons. Uh, Ian, Ian says, use your engine sheet. Absolutely. Often in my applications, I have a sheet called engine. So I have a different role for each sheet. I have a sheet called engine that does this kind of thing that holds information for the programmer that makes sure everything works, that drives the spreadsheet forward, just like an engine in a car. Uh, but the best idea, no, no, not the best idea, but the idea we're most interested in on 30 for 30 is Adrian chipping in here, Michael chipping in here as well, Daniel chipping in here to Sandeep at the end chipping in. Thank you to everybody else for your ideas and there's merit in all of them. But I like the idea of using a variable, using a variable. So remember, a variable is just a place to store information. And you can go back to what was it, our third stream where we where we had an introduction to variables. So go back and revise it if you can't remember what variables are all about. So my challenge to you before tomorrow is can you omit the current state cell and substitute a variable to do the job? Substitute a variable 
to do the job so we don't need this current state cell. That's going to improve the security of the application, the robustness of the application. But it's a bit of a coding challenge and you've got a knowledge gap at the moment. You don't know everything you need to know in order to do that. But that is your challenge for tomorrow. Let me know any final questions in the chat. We will, of course, go through it in the stream tomorrow. Uh, Steve says, never touch the engine sheet. Yes, indeed. So I have um, at some point we'll do a stream where we'll talk about overall application design. So that's another meta skill. Uh, if you have a well-designed application, the coding is easier, the formula are easier. The basic idea is each sheet should have a particular role. And one of those sheets I always call engine. And that sheet contains values. For example, the current state cell that contains values and things that help support the running of the application, but things that the user doesn't need to see. I also have a sheet called lists in the application. That's where we uh, put the data that's going to drive the drop down menu. So different roles for different sheets. We'll do a presentation on some point where we can get into that. Andrew, yeah, definitely leave a comment. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to have time to look at any files uh, because I've got a busy day tomorrow. But so definitely leave a comment, Andrew. I will get back to you. So let me know, guys, any final questions. So certainly take a look at Members Monday. Uh, tomorrow we've got the double header. Uh, you can click the join button below this video. Uh, there's a little video there where I talk about the different membership options that we have. I would love to have you in Members Monday. We're going to be looking at a real world application, applying Excel VBA to it, discussing it all in the chat, and you'll be part of our Members Monday community. Okay, no further questions in the chat. So good luck with the challenge. Let me know how you go tomorrow. And I hope it is keeping you amused during these strange times when you know we have to stay at home and all that. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Take care. I'll see you then.